PayPal used to be over 5% of my portfolio and a few weeks ago, I took some profits on the stock and today it is only around 2% of my portfolio. I said that I was going to take a decision on what to do with the rest of the shares after the earnings. Was I going to sell everything? Was I going to buy more? Maybe I made a mistake, I sold, or maybe I was just going to hold the stock. If you have been watching my channel, you will know that usually I don't react to earnings. So what happened here? What changed here? I have been telling you since the beginning of the year, maybe even last year, that PayPal reminds me of Meta in 2022. And I do regret not buying more of Meta. So what changed in the last few weeks? There are three main reasons why I sold my shares of PayPal. As I mentioned, PayPal got the fourth largest position in my portfolio, but I wasn't buying more of the stock. And that's because there was no margin of safety. I took some profits on PayPal were actually sold. So I was able to buy PayPal at a lower price. But today when I look at PayPal, there was no margin of safety. So I wasn't buying more of PayPal, but instead I had a lot of cash in my portfolio. I was buying other stocks. And one of these companies that I was buying was Wise, a direct competitor to PayPal. Of course, the business of Wise is smaller compared to PayPal. They don't directly compete 100% with PayPal, but only a small subset of the business that PayPal does. And that is international money transfer. Gradually, WISE became the fourth largest position in my portfolio and overtook PayPal. An important question I had to ask myself at this point was whether I should be holding both companies. Maybe I should be buying more of WISE and get rid of PayPal. From time to time, I'm going to get messages to analyze portfolios, to analyze stocks for people. And of course, uh, they pay me for that. Initially, I told someone, okay, you're going to pay me by PayPal. But then I sent him a message I told him, make the transfer by WISE because it was going to be cheaper for both of us and the transaction was going to be quicker also. So if I am choosing WISE over PayPal, there must be millions of people doing the same thing. And it's not just WISE, even the Super Investors Club. I used to do all the transactions through PayPal, but then I learned about Gumroad. Now I'm using Gumroad which is a better alternative compared to PayPal and there are so many different smaller companies taking the market share of PayPal. PayPal claims to be the leader when it comes to digital online sales. It is true, PayPal is the leader. But since PayPal is involved in so many different businesses, they are not the best at almost anything. They are competitors coming, trying to compete with them. As long as it is easier to use a competitor, people are going to choose the competitor over PayPal. Why I chose Gumroad over PayPal? Because it was easier. Why I chose Wise over PayPal? Because it was cheaper. With Apple, with Google entering the market, they had cheaper and easier options compared to PayPal. PayPal may be the leader today, but that doesn't mean that this will be the case in 10 years. Maybe there won't be one leader. If you look overall, PayPal is still going to be the leader. But if you look at individual businesses, they are competitors that have already overtook PayPal. I have been looking at all these competitors. I look at Stripe, which is not a public company. I look at Adyen, which is a public company doing the same business as Stripe. If tomorrow the stock market is down 50%, hopefully, and Wise is down 50%, PayPal is down 50%, Adyen is down 50%, I am more likely going to invest in Adyen and WISE compared to PayPal. So why am I holding so much of PayPal today? PayPal does have a big advantage over its competitors that the business is internationalized. I cannot use Stripe, I cannot use Adyen, but I can use PayPal. Even when I'm using Gumroad, eventually the money is going through PayPal and then to my bank account. Because PayPal has a big international business, it is going to be their leader for years to come. Most of the time, once a merchant has already established a payment processor, it is going to be hard for them to change it. They don't want to change it unless they really need to. When I transitioned from PayPal to Gumroad, I did not ask the members of the Super Investors Club who are already paying through PayPal to change to Gumroad. It would be useless. Even if I'm making less money, it's okay. Let them use PayPal. They are making payments on PayPal every month and I'm getting paid. So PayPal also is making money for that. It's only a few members. Now, if there is a merchant with hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of users going through PayPal, it's going to be a little hard for them to change the stripe. Even if you as an individual, you know you have alternatives, 
for the merchants, that may not be the case. And they may be using PayPal, you won't even know about it because it's unbranded. If you look at the total payment volume for PayPal in 2021, only 24% came from unbranded. Today, that's over 37%. It's mainly for Braintree, with the deals competing directly with Adyen with Stripe. That's something that the new management wants to work on. Of course, they want to also work on the original business of PayPal. They have to improve it. But this new management is quite costly and not really in terms of cash, but in terms of stocks. In recent quarters, PayPal has been hiring many new people. Someone, I believe from Uber joined the team. They were going to create an ad business for PayPal. The market is happy about it. Hopefully it's going to work, but hiring all these people, you have to pay them and they are being paid by shares. You are a shareholder of the company and you're being diluted to pay these people. PayPal is saying that this year, free cash flow is going to be 6 billion US dollars. Over the trading 12 months, they paid 1.4 billion in stock-based compensation. So the real owner's earnings will be a little less than that. It will be around 4.6 billion US dollars. Almost 25% of the free cash flow is gone. It's going to the managers while the owners is left with the rest. There's an argument that they are buying back shares, so it's solving the issue. Buying back shares doesn't really solve the issue. Let's say you bought the shares of PayPal in 2015 for around $34 a share. Today, it's around $65 a share. So you make a profit of around 100%, which is bad actually if you think about it over all this time. But you are actually making a profit, but a manager, who got the shares, they are not paid by options. They are being paid by restricted stocks unit. So they don't have to actually go into the market and buy their shares at a certain price with options. They are being gifted the shares. So the manager was being gifted the shares at zero dollars. Today, if that same manager is doing the same transaction as you, selling the shares to the company back, they are making an unlimited profit because they never actually bought the shares. They were gifted the shares. As long as the stock price is going up, they have more of the upside compared to the owners, but once the stock price is going down, the owners are taking more of the downside compared to the managers. There's actually no downside to them. The good news is that the new management is trying to change that. And I am a big fan of the new CEO. I think he has good ideas. I think things are going to change with PayPal. Now they're aligning the stock-based compensation more with shareholder value which I believe is a good idea, but still it's going to take some time to change. And even the new things that PayPal have implemented, for example, the ads business, there's also the unbranded now, which is growing. All these new ventures, hopefully it's going to work. I don't know. But when you look at the business of PayPal today, it is a turnaround. I was comparing it with Meta in 2022. Meta was never a turnaround. Yes. They were investing in something new, the metaverse, AI, it was new, and I believe it was going to work, but Meta had its main business, the ads business, which was still growing. I was betting on the ads business. I saw the metaverse as a bonus. I even gave it a negative value because they were losing, they are still losing money on the metaverse. This is not the case with PayPal today. The whole business of PayPal, I see it as a turnaround. I hope it is going to work, but I don't want 4%, 5%, 6% of my portfolio in a turnaround. I prefer to stay at 2% because you need a big margin of safety or at least a catalyst, which PayPal doesn't really have today. I'm not saying that PayPal is a bad investment. I believe that the stock price of PayPal in a few years will be higher than where it is today. And I believe that those turnarounds are going to work the way that the management is talking and everything else. But how certain I am with everything, there are other stocks with which I have more certainty. That's all I can say. I'm not going to give you a number. It's all about probability. Let's say when I'm investing in a company, I want the intrinsic value to increase by 15% a year. Of course, if I can get 20, 25%, I'll be happier. But the minimum I'm looking for is 15% a year. PayPal cannot do that today with its current growth. It's never going to grow its earnings by 15% a year, which will mean the intrinsic value will grow by 15% a year. PayPal cannot do that today. I believe everyone will agree with me. If I'm looking for 15% returns, I need to have a margin of safety. If I buy the stock, let's say at 50% discount, then even if the intrinsic value is not growing at 15%, because of this margin of safety, I can still make a profit and still hold the company long term. 
or maybe I take a profit. But this is not happening with PayPal. If everything the management is planning works, really they shock the world, then maybe it is going to grow its intrinsic value by 15% a year. But this is not the case today. And when making an investment, you have to be certain. If I'm going to compare WISE with PayPal, I have more certainty with the current business of WISE. Even if the growth rate of WISE goes down, I don't mind because I believe that 10 years from now, the business of WISE is going to be bigger, much bigger compared to what it is today. I have more certainty with that. But will the business of PayPal be much bigger 10 years from now compared to what it is today? I don't really think so. Speaking of WISE, I would recommend you watch this video about why I bought WISE. Have a nice day and goodbye.